Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the 21st episode of my chess trap series. In this episode, I am going to show you a mafia line against Moroxy bind in the Sicilian from Black Perspective. Now anybody who plays the Sicilian knows very well that it is why it's one of the most strong and reliable weapon. Its solid structure drain out all tactical possibilities in the position which literally frustrates many Sicilian players, especially if they are playing for the win. Don't worry, because the line I am going to demonstrate here not only wins the pawn in the opening, but then it is only white who is going to suffer and struggle for rest of the game. The opening arises after the following order, e4, c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, d4, C captures d4 and knight captures d4. In the modern world where you have the access of mega database, online database and many other resources which can tell you exactly what your opponent is playing and if his preference is nothing better than Moroxy bind, then here I am going to propose a very tricky move, queen to c7. The obvious choice from the white is to play c4 and create the bind immediately. However, if your opponent continue with moves such as knight to c3, then my recommendation is you play the move e6 and transpose back to the Sicilian Taimano or the Paulson variation, which is one of the modern trendy Sicilian line. Okay, c4, what else? So you can see I have highlighted by the arrows White has created this bind which completely dissuade Black's thematic break d5. Well, no matter, Black is going to continue with knight to f6, attacking on e4, knight to c3, defending, and now comes the cute point behind the move queen to c7 because Black is going to deliver this mafia bomb. BAM! <laughs> Well, as a black, in how many openings you are going to win pawn on the sixth move of the game? This is the beauty about this line. Now, when I checked this position in online database, I found out that there are 93 games played from this position where black's results are tremendous. As I have highlighted over here, white has two choices. Amongst them, Knight captures e4 is the most popular one, but personally, I think knight d to b5 is the most critical line. So let's see each by turn. The first move, knight captures e4, is obviously bad. The simple reason is after queen to e5, not only black is going to regain the piece, but asking white, hey, what you get for losing the pawn in the opening? Okay, the best response goes with knight to b5, looking at juicy c7 square. But no matter, black is going to deliver this check first. And after the move bishop to e2, black queen can simply come back to the e5 square where it can nicely defend the c7 square. If your opponent continue here with g3, then queen to b8 is a very strong reply. So in the majority of cases, white continue with f4 and after the move, queen to b8 and castle on the king side. Yes, indeed, white has some development, but I don't think so it worthy a pawn. As per the liking, you can play either the move d6, e6 and g6 and play your favorite Sicilian. And once you consolidate your position, it is only white who is struggling to make a draw. So this is one of the wonderful trap exists against Moroxy Bind, which you should definitely consider playing in the professional tournament. To my surprise, Knight D to B5 has been played only in four games, but certainly it is more critical than Knight captures E4. Here, as white is attacking two piece, black response is force, black has to play queen to a5, 
pinning down the c3 knight as well as controlling the c7 square. And white will continue with his tricky business, queen to e2, attacking on e4. So black response is forced, black has to take this knight. And now if white take back the knight, then absolutely he has no compensation. But white's idea is he wants to deliver this nasty check, knight to d6. The forcing line continues with king to d8, knight capture c7. If king to e8, then white has a forcing draw. So my recommendation here is you continue with king to c7. And white doesn't have time to get this rook in the corner because his own queen hangs. So accordingly, white response is force. White has to play queen to d2, pinning down the c3 knight. And now black can save his rook with rook to g8. So by all this means, white has gained his pawn back. But as the analysis goes further, you will find out that in almost all the variation, it is only black who is coming out on the top. Here two moves are tried. The obvious move, b capture c3, is less accurate due to the strong reply by black that is at 6. So you can see the simple idea by black, he wants to trap that knight in the black camp. One game in the database continue with bishop to d3, so trying to get attack on rook. Black plays queen to h5, attacking the knight, which white defended with queen to f4, a check to the king, so black response is force. Black has to play d6, and now the problem coming on the surface. So black has a very simple idea to play bishop to e6 and trapping the knight. And I think white has the only surviving resource, which I don't think all of your opponent are going to find out, and that is g4. Giving up a pawn to save a piece. The line continues with bishop captures g4, rook to g1, g5, counterattacking the queen. But after queen captures g4, queen captures f7, it is turned out that after all these complications, black still remain a pawn up and look at white queen side, it is completely shattered. And with all aspects considered, this is a winning age for the black. The most accurate response here is queen capture c3. But you can see already white has problem after queen capture c3 because it completely crippled down white pawn structure on the queen side. And on top of everything, black has the same threat at 6. So that poor knight is stuck in the black camp and white needs some intelligence to take out that baby. I reached this position in just one game against a 2100 rated opponent and this game will give you a great insight how good this position is for the black. My opponent continue with c5, so he just want to stop me to play d6. But I played the move g5, so my simple idea is to play rook to g7 and trapping that knight. So he continue with bishop to c4, defending as well as attacking. And I played a very tricky continuation, that is, first of all, bishop to g7, creating a threat. My opponent defended with bishop to d2, and now comes knight to a5. So by force, white has to move the bishop, and if he moves it, then the knight will fall after rook to f8. And position is not at all easy to play as a white. After a long consideration, my opponent come out with his blunder move, knight captures at 6 which at first sight looks so cool because it is saving all the pieces. But after black's next reply, that is rook to f8, he figure out that he is going to lose a piece in a broad daylight. Well, I hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful trappy line against Moroxy Bind. Play the moon knight captures e4, shock your opponent and get some great victories and tournament points. Well, thank you for watching this video. 
feel free to like subscribe and comment on this video and i'll meet you in my next episode very soon bye and take care